Greetings, my friends, and welcome to the third section, exploring the magnificent type system of Rust. In the last section, we learned more about Rust's toolchain and ecosystem. We got a brief overview of crates and crates.io. At the same time, we learned how to test the codes. In this section, we'll learn safety and at the same time, and also try to impose contracts and protocols on our army. We'll also go through advanced traits. In the first video, we'll learn about memory safety and borrow checker. We'll take a look at borrow checker, which is the groundbreaking feature of Rust that ensures memory safety. Now, borrow checker is the mechanism that can detect problems in code that could cause memory safety errors. In other conventional languages, the wrong use of a pointer may lead to all kinds of problems, but Rust doesn't have a problem like that, has a strong compiler feature known as borrow checker. This prevents wrong pointer allocation. When an object in a Rust-controlled system takes space in the memory, the resources, the memory is said to have just gotten an owner. Only the owner can release its memory. When the lifetime of an object is ended, the compiler can release the memory allocated by the object. And if, after that, the same memory is allocated to another object, then the last object does not have any permission to access that memory. Let's look at the code. When a function is called, the arguments are borrowed at least during the call of the function and until the result is released. On lines 4 and 5, you call borrow mut function. This returns a string. The result does not share any lifetime with the argument, so the argument is only borrowed for the lifetime of the function call. In lines 9 and 10, you call borrow lifetime. This returns an ampersand AI32. The result shares a lifetime with the argument so the argument is borrowed until the end of the scope of the result, which is immediate, since the result is not used. On line 12, you call borrow lifetime, which returns an ampersand AI32, and you assign the result to num again. The result shares a lifetime with the argument, so the argument is borrowed until the end of the scope of num again. In this video, we got a brief overview of borrow checker, 